We are going on a quest to explore the incredible journey of food waste and how it can be turned into renewable electricity. Just as food is used to fuel our bodies, why can't it be used to energise our home? After all, energy is energy. It's just a case of turning it into a usable form that can be used for other purposes. The journey of our waste starts here, at the crack of dawn. Today, I'm going to be following my food caddy to see where it goes. It's 14 minutes past seven and I've just spotted the caddy collection team coming up the street. I'm going to brave the elements and join the team as they travel along their route collecting the food caddies and find out what it's like to be at the cutting edge of green energy creation. So I'm lucky today to be uh, meeting with Josh and Ryan who are out collecting the brown caddies with our food waste in. So you work at a heck of a pace, don't you, Ryan? It's like trying to keep up. I do try. <laughs> You've got, got a few limitations, but yeah. And are you going slow for me, or is it? Are we going? I'm being nice. Yeah. You're being nice. I thought you were. <laughs> so Ryan, we've we've come up to this caddy here. Obviously, we can see into it because the lids are on it. But yep. but what? It doesn't look like it's got the normal sort of food waste in there. Yeah. So this one, as you can see, is just full of plastics and just the normal food packaging, like. You wouldn't be allowed to take this on ordinarily because it doesn't fit what we're meant to be taking, so. What we put in our food caddy directly impacts Ryan and the team. For this system to work, we need to take that extra care in separating our waste. How far do you actually go in a day? 10, 15 miles, depending on where you are. I'd say probably a good estimate. And that's like, you know, every day? Every day, obviously minus the weekends. Well, what's the most important thing that we can do as sort of consumers and, and the public to help you when you're out collecting? Do your bags up, really. So double knot them's the thing. Double knot them's definitely the way to do it, yeah. After clocking up my fair share of steps, I took shelter in the collection lorry and caught up with driver Josh to find out why it's important to recycle food waste, come rain or shine. Oh, hi, mate. Hi, oh, well, you all right? Yeah, good, good. So Josh, from your point of view, have you seen a growth in the amount of caddies and the amount of waste that people are putting in their caddies? Halloween and Christmas are always the busiest time of year for us, but on a normal week, you have five trucks that go out um, that pick up in region of four to five tonne on each truck. So it potentially 20 tonne um, a day that we pick up on food waste. So there's always room for improvement, um, but it's all about knowledge, getting that knowledge out to the residents to make sure they know what to put in there um, and know what happens to it when it does recycle. It's clear that Josh and the team are vital to the process of turning waste to watts. But how can we contribute from the comfort of our own homes? To shed light on this, I had a chat with Zoe Austin of Central Bedfordshire Council. So Zoe, what are the do's and don'ts that we should be doing with our food waste? So with our food waste bins, we really want to be putting as much food waste in there as we can. Um, a lot of misconceptions actually are um, about what we can put in our food waste bin. So there's actually a lot that you can put in your food waste caddy that you can't put in your compost bin at home. So that includes things like cooked food, um, bread and pastries, even raw meat and fish as well. So we really want to make sure that we're capturing all that. And is, is there enough capacity if everybody did more? Are you going to have to create, you know, get more people employed and have more vans on the rounds, more lorries? Yeah, we still have capacity for increased collections as well. Um, we're also looking at um, other areas that we could expand food waste collections, so for example in flats. But really we want people also, as well as to recycle their food waste, we want them to be reducing their food waste in the first place. There's a lot of food that we throw away that actually could have been eaten rather than it being thrown in the bin. So. For example, it might have gone out of date before we had a chance to eat it. So really we need to be looking at our habits as well about how we can reduce unavoidable food waste. I really want to thank you for joining us today. But I've got to rush now and jump back onto a, to the lorry with Ryan and Josh and actually go on the rest of the round and then head over to the, to the centre where they recycle it. As the lorry finished loading and geared up for the journey, I swiftly hopped back into the cab, setting our course towards one of Biogen's 14 anaerobic digestion plants. Biogen recycle about half a million tonnes of organic waste each year in the UK, generating 25 megawatts of green electricity for the national grid. That's enough energy to power the town of Harrogate for a year. 
Darren, it's a little bit noisy in here, but look, yeah. I've just been collecting, and we've just seen a lorry come here in tip. So what you're seeing now, that vehicle has just tipped. It will have tipped into one of these two bays in our reception hall. That vehicle's probably collected from anywhere between two and 3,000 households today. And we collect in total um, from around 65,000 households in central Bedfordshire. Do you feel that there could be more coming from households? Yeah, absolutely. There is uh, legislation called the Environment Act. What we're going to see when that comes in is every household in the UK will receive separate food waste collections once a week. That in itself will bring huge, huge tonnages to market. The forecasts are anywhere between 1.2 million and 2 million tonnes of food waste that are going to come just from that environment asset. After the waste has been dropped off, it must first be sorted to ensure no contaminants make it through into the anaerobic digester. I'm here with Steve Young. We saw a lorry come in and do its tip. What happens then? So what will happen then is that the machine operator will scoop the waste up with the telehandler, pop it into the hopper. It will then all get churned up, mixed and depackaged and then it gets put, introduced into our process. So that's where it's depackaged. Yes. Can we actually have a look in there? Uh, yeah, we can go and have a look if you like. Brilliant. So, it's been tipped into the hopper. There's an auger that brings it up, drops it down onto this bed. We have a magnetic belt that goes over to take away any contaminants. So we don't want to put any metals or anything like that into our mill. The food waste will then drop down into our depackaging machine. Uh, and that's where it separates from the plastic to the organics uh, and obviously that's the important bit for us because we want the organics we're not really too interested in the plastics so so then the organic stuff where's that going from here now that goes from here it goes through a series of pipes and macerators and pumps and they'll go out into our tank farm into what we call our raw waste buffer tank it's a bit like a larder at home in the kitchen and we'll go and have a look at that now Wait. if you like yes you lead the way then see i'll follow you Anaerobic digestion is the process by which organic matter is broken down to produce biogas and biofertilizer. This process happens in the absence of oxygen in a sealed, oxygen-free tank called an anaerobic digester. The first tank that you can see, that's our raw waste buffer tank. That holds just over 1,600 meter cubed of food for our digesters. It then gets fed into our two digesters that we've got here on site. Once the organic waste is separated from packaging and contaminants, it's liquefied and moves to the waste buffer tank. From there, it's fed little by little into the two digesters. Inside, microorganisms break down the waste, creating methane. This methane rises to the top of the tank and is sent to the gas holder. Finally, this gas becomes fuel for engines that produce electricity, powering homes across the country. We have a gas holder here and inside that is a variable bag that goes up and down. So all the gas that's being produced through our process off of our digesters then goes into this, this bag here. From here it then goes fuel, it supplies fuel to our engines, our combined heat and power engines which produce electricity and heat for our, our system. Inside there, as I said, is a variable bag that will go up and down as we increase decrease in gas. Uh, the engines look at this gas bag and then if we start to, to fall off, the engines will reduce. Um, as we increase, the engines will then ramp up to, to full load. The idea is that we keep uh, all our engines at full load, gives us the best heat, best electricity produces that goes out to the grid. And this is methane inside so here, is isn't it? This is methane in here, yes. yes. So 60% six, methane and about 40% carbon dioxide. And, and fundamentally, those two things there, methane and carbon dioxide, they're two of the worst things for, for global warming, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah. So this process is not only keeping all of that green waste from going into landfill, but it's capturing it yes. and then using it for energy. Yes. Every tonne of food waste recycled by anaerobic digestion as an alternative to landfill prevents between half and one tonne of CO2 entering the atmosphere one of the many benefits of anaerobic digestion. See, we're here at the engines now. How are they actually turning all of that methane into electricity? So the methane that's coming from our gas holder uh, goes through a, a booster. 
So the, it, the delivery's got enough pressure to run these engines as, as fuel. There's a big generator on the back that produces the electricity, which then pushes it back into the national grid. Obviously, the engines are hot, so they produce heat. So we have a, a hot water loop that circles the side, and then that gives us the heat that we need to, to heat our digesters and do our pasteurization. And are you running the site uh, at its maximum capacity all the time, or is there an optimum to yeah, capacity? We run our engines uh, as hard as we can run them. We can't overgenerate because there's, there's limits. These engines will only run as hard as they can run. So for this site in particular, it's uh, 2.7 meg of electricity every hour, 64 megawatts a day. An average three, four bedroom house home will do 2.9 megawatts a year. So every hour we produce some electricity for one home for a year. Biogen doesn't just generate renewable electricity for the grid. What remains is a valuable biofertiliser, which is applied twice a year on farmland, in place of fossil fuel-derived fertilisers. Biogen call this the closed loop. What starts on the farm is returned to the farm, and the whole process can begin again. With increasing concerns about climate change and a growing awareness of resource conservation, the need for efficient waste-to-energy solutions has become paramount. Now, modern waste to energy facilities capture the natural production of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas which would otherwise escape into the atmosphere. By converting food waste into electricity, we're not only reducing our carbon footprint, but we're also closing the loop in the grand cycle of sustainability. It's truly a remarkable fusion of tradition and innovation. So before you toss away your kitchen scraps, Remember that they hold the potential to power a brighter, greener tomorrow. Let's embrace the electric evolution of waste into watts and celebrate how it's shaping the world of renewable energy for generations to come.